society. This woman has a child. We need to protect the child's identity and future. She has sisters, brothers, family, and we are a very conservative society. We cannot speak about the details of this case, but I did personally apologize for all journalists for the way our security elements dealt with them. I apologized uh, personally to a few of you who were punched in the face or their cameras were broken. I felt, you know, that the way we behaved was completely wrong. Um, yes, the woman was not allowed to come into the hotel, but this is hardly a crime, and they should have asked her to leave, uh, you know, and not to uh, deal roughly with the journalists. But this shows you again uh, that, yes, we do need to change. Yes, we do need to accept uh, the international media, and we need to change the way people think, the mentality of ordinary people. Jonathan, there is something that people forget. People think that democracy comes if it changes the government. But I assure you, democracy is um, ideas. Uh, the Libyan government, the state, is much more democratic and progressive than ordinary Libyan people in many ways. Just as ordinary Libyan people are more aggressive and democratic in other elements, in other ideas. For example, the way we see women, the way we look at women and the issue of women, the state has been much more aggressive than the society, the Libyan society. Uh, the way we view religion, the state has been much more progressive than society. But when it comes to, um, for example, uh, freedom of expression, then society becomes more aggressive, more progressive than the state. So it is not just a matter of changing the top, if you like. It's a very complicated process, democracy. You need to change society itself. I believe what happened with, uh, with uh, Iman al-Obaidi and the way our security elements treated you guys is not because just uh, of them being officials or belonging to the government, but because of the very mentality of the Libyan society. Uh, a woman comes in, claims that she was raped, talks about it in detail. For our society, this is very shameful. And the men we had here in this hotel did not have the respect that they should have had for this woman. They treated her as if she was a low woman and did not respect her uh, rights, did not respect her, uh, the, the situation she was in. I talked to them, by the way. The way they talked to me, and the way they explained their action just proved to me it's the mentality of the society, not just, not just the government. You know, um, after the incident, you, you told me, you apologized, um, and I appreciated that, but you told me that uh, some of the minders who were particularly violent in, in the <laughs> response would be fired. Yeah. And I came back recently to find uh, Jalal al Traika. Um, who, who um, is the man, do you know, with the... With with, the yeah, I, I know him, yes. Um, yeah. he, 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 he's now my new best friend because he's been, <laughs> he's been my personal minder as we've gone around. He was, he, uh, we, we did, uh, we did uh, uh, fire uh, three of the security. Has Jalal been rehabilitated? Uh, he was one of them, he was one of them. Um, these people are not under my command, okay, but I talked to the proper authorities. They did punish them, they did um, um, fire them. Uh, and you, now you are telling me, actually after you told me, Jonathan, I only noticed his, his presence in the hotel. Because as I know, I'm a oh, We've been aware, aware of it for, from day one, when yeah. he was um, manhandling But, but uh, they have been warned and, uh, you know, they have been blamed for the incident and uh, the proper authorities talk to them and hopefully they will behave better now. But make no mistake, they were punished for it and... Um, um, Hopefully they will, they know better now, if you like. How do, how do you think Western journalists have been, beha been behaving, no, behaving is the wrong word, have been reporting all of what's been happening? I mean, you talk about the minders, but what about the journalists? You sometimes stand well, here and lecture us about I do, our don't unprofessionalism. I? I do, don't I? Well, I think, Jonathan, uh, people come to this country, journalists, with preconceptions. They are anti Gaddafi anti-Libya as a government, pro-democracy. And this idea, for me, veils their vision. It doesn't allow them 
to see the complexity of the Libyan situation. So they, they see this dictator, people rebelling against the dictator. The situation for them is very simple. You side with the people revolting or rebelling against the dictator. Many of them uh, do not sit down and see how complicated the situation is. Um, they don't see that it's very possible that this rebellion is not pro-democracy, but it's for wealth and power, and that maybe the true and genuine pro-democracy people are siding with Gaddafi, with the dictator, if you like, because these people just believe, happen to believe, that this dictator, again, is just a safety valve, a unifying figure for the country. We need to have him there to lead the country peacefully and gradually towards change. Because the alternative would be for tribes to fight against each other, for Al-Qaeda to come in and establish itself in the country, for the country to collapse and be divided into many uh, you know, little pieces, just like it happened in Iraq, in Somalia, in Afghanistan. We are, Jonathan, pro-democracy. We want to establish a transparent, free political system in Libya. We do not support uh, a family that wants to control the future of the country. We want the Libyan people to choose their political system and the leaders of this political system. But what this armed rebellion is doing is something completely different. These people want power and wealth. And they want to do it with any way possible. They are sacrificing our kids. They are inviting foreign armies to come into the country. They are fighting among each other. Many of them, Jonathan, were part of the system for decades. Many of these people, you know, my record is cleaner than them. I joined the regime a year ago. These people, the so-called pro-democracy in the east of the country, some of them served the regime for 30 years, for 40 years. They are part of any crimes the regime committed against Europe, against the international community. I'm cleaner than them. I joined the regime a year ago to help lead the peaceful democratic process forward. So the journalists need to understand the complexity of the situation. The other thing is, the idea of a liberator does not exist in Europe anymore because you guys had your liberation, you know, 200 years ago. Gaddafi, for many people, came to this country, liberated it from foreign occupation, foreign influence, and most importantly, he helped the Libyans acquire their wealth back, oil. Because oil from 1970 became Libyan oil. And through the Libyan oil, we were able to have a revolution in education, in health, in transport. Well, that could have happened under anyone. Yeah, but, but this was important. <coughs> Libya was a very, very backward society. And it was a starving society. With the revolution, it helped to make Libya a very wealthy, quite advanced country in many ways. Still, we're not saying that we should not change and have democracy, but the Muammar Gaddafi became a figure of this country. He unified the tribes and made sure that peace exists in the country. And now we are asking him, and he agreed to this, to lead us forward towards democracy, gradually, peacefully, and from within. Many people find this acceptable. They like it the way it is. If democracy takes 10 or 15 years, or even 20 years to come to us, why not? Especially we know that to have democracy, we need to change people's mentality, the society, which is a huge task. I mean, you could easily change the government or the laws, but how would you change the way people view women, for example? How would you change the way people view religion in Libya? How would you change the way people uh, view foreigners? That's, that's a major task. There's lots of what you say I don't contest, and I really mm. tr truly understand that you know, it is far more complex than the black and white that, that, mm. we, that some of us may portray it as. I've got to say, though, I've got to hand it to you uh, as, as a communicator, uh, as, as a uh, government spokesman, but as a spin doctor, where did you learn your tricks? <laughs> I spent my 15 years in Britain cycling, uh, fighting for peace. I was a very active uh, pro-peace uh, activist. 
uh, I cycled for the environment. I cycled the whole length of Britain from London to Edinburgh for the environment. I cycled the length of Thames for the environment. I was a member of every single debate society, political society you can imagine. I loved my life in Britain and it, it did really shape who I am now. Um, so you could say that you taught me how to be a spin doctor. The British society, the British way, the, the British, uh, and by the way, uh, I was under, you know, the whole time I was in Britain, it was Labour, and Labour are the masters <laughs> of, you know, spinning the truth and playing with... Uh, so it is a sort of admission that that's in fact what you're doing. No, it's, I, I do believe in what I'm doing. I honestly and genuinely believe in the moral position I have taken. I'm not doing this as a job. I'm not doing it because I'm faithful to a one person, namely the leader. I'm not doing it because um, I belong to the, the same tribe the leader belongs to, uh, belongs to as it has been suggested. Uh, it, I just happen to belong to the same tribe. I do it genuinely and honestly, because I believe it's the moral choice. I believe Libya has to remain, remain united, peaceful, and that change has to happen, but from within, peacefully and gradually. As simple as that, Jonathan.